Hello students, let me introduce you the chapter mathematical reasoning. In this chapter, we shall look into the introduction, statements, new statements from old, special words or phrases, implications and validating statements. Let us begin with the introduction. In this chapter, we shall discuss about some basic ideas of mathematical reasoning. All of us know that human beings evolved from the lower species over many millennia. The main asset that made human species superior to other species was the ability to reason. How well this ability can be used depends on each person's power of reasoning. How to develop this power? Here we shall discuss the process of reasoning especially in the context of mathematics. In mathematical language, there are two kinds of reasoning, inductive and deductive. We have already discussed the inductive reasoning in the context of mathematical induction. In this chapter, we shall discuss some fundamentals of deductive reasoning. In general, the goal of study of logic is to construct good or sound arguments and to recognize bad or unsound arguments. Thus, logic is the science of reasoning. Though Aristotle was one of the earliest writers on logic, the first one to employ mathematical methods in the study of logic was English mathematician George Bully from 1815 to 1864. Hence, sometimes the study of logic in mathematics is called Boolean logic. Now, let us see what do you mean by statements. The basic unit involved in mathematical reasoning is a mathematical statement. Let us start with two sentences. First one, in 2003, the president of India was a woman. Sentence second. An elephant weighs more than a human being. When we read these sentences, we immediately decide that the first sentence is false and the second is correct. There is no confusion regarding these. In mathematics, such sentences are called statements. On the other hand, consider the sentence, women are more intelligent than men. Some people may think it is true while others may disagree. Regarding this sentence, we cannot say whether it is always true or false. That means, this sentence is ambiguous. Such a sentence is not acceptable as a statement in mathematics. A sentence is called a mathematically acceptable statement if it is either true or false, but not both. Whenever we mention a statement here, it is a mathematically acceptable statement. While studying mathematics, we come across many such sentences. Some examples are 2 plus 2 equals 4. The sum of two positive numbers is positive. All prime numbers are odd numbers. Of these sentences, the first two are true and the third is false. There is no ambiguity regarding these sentences. Therefore, they are statements. Can you think of an example of a sentence which is vague or ambiguous? Consider the sentence, the sum of x and y is greater than 0. Here, we are not in a position to determine whether it is true or false unless we know what x and y are. For example, it is false when x is equal to 1 and y is equal to negative 3 and true when x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0. Therefore, this sentence is not a statement, but the sentence for any natural number x and y, the sum of x and y is greater than 0 is a statement. Now, consider 
the following sentences. First, how beautiful. Second, open the door. Third, where are you going? Are these statements? No, because the first one is an exclamation, the second an order and the third a question. None of these is considered as a statement in mathematical language. Sentences involving variable time such as today, tomorrow or yesterday are not statements. This is because it is not known what time is referred here. For example, the sentence tomorrow is Friday is not a statement. The sentence is correct that means true on a Thursday but not on other days. The same argument holds for sentences with pronouns unless a particular person is referred to and for variable places such as here, there, etc. For example, the sentences, she is a mathematics graduate, Kashmir is far from here are not statements. Here is another sentence, there are 40 days in a month, would you call this a statement? Note that the period mentioned in the sentence above is a variable time and that is any of 12 months, but we know that the sentence is always false irrespective of the month. Since the maximum number of days in a month never exceeds 31. Now, can you tell which of the following are propositions that is statements and which are not? First, good morning to all. Second, raise your hands. Third, are you going to Delhi? Fourth, may God bless you. Fifth, how tall is Ramesh? Sixth, Ramesh is 3 meters tall. Seventh, Sanya plays tennis. Eighth, the sun is a star. Ninth, roses are white. Tenth, all integers are natural numbers. Eleventh, all squares are rectangles. Twelfth, 5 plus 3 is equal to 10. 13, 5 plus 3 is equal to 8. You note here that last 8 are prepositions, first 5 are not. So, what makes a sentence a statement is the fact that the sentence is either true or false, but not both. While dealing with statements, we usually denote them by small letters P, Q, R and so on. Let us see an interesting question here. Give three examples of sentences which are not statements. Give reason for your answer. Look at the solution here. First sentence, everyone in this room is bold. This is not a statement because from the context it is not clear which room is referred here and the term bold is not clearly defined. Let us look at the second sentence, she is an engineering student. This is also not a statement because it is not clear who she is. Sentence third, sin square theta is always greater than 1 upon 2. This is not a statement because we can't say whether the sentence is true or not. So, students, you have studied about what are statements. I hope you have followed. Now, it is time to take down the home assignment. Note down the question, which of the following sentences are statements? Give reason for your answers. First, the square of a number is an even number. Second, answer this question. Third, the product of minus 1 and 8 is 8. Fourth, 
the sum of all interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Fifth, today is a windy day. In the next session, we shall study about new statements from old. Meet you in the next session. Thank you.